I love my Pocket NC, but it's kind of slow. If I push the machine any harder, it doesn't go well. I want to machine parts faster, and to do that, I'm going to have to make some upgrades. A machine's performance can be measured by a material removal rate, which is the volume of material the machine can remove per minute. This rate is described by three machine settings, depth of cut, width of cut, and the feed rate. Together, they describe the volume of a box that has been removed. The first question is why? Why can't I just increase one of those parameters? The problem is with the stiffness of the machine. If I increase any of those parameters, the machine begins to struggle to make the cut. When a machine is taking a cut, it's not just a golden cylinder of destruction. There's a spinning blade that repeatedly hits the material. This generates a force, which is trying to push the end mill and the workpiece away from each other. Assuming both of them are rigidly held, the pressure will continue to build until the material yields and a chip is peeled away from the material. In reality, both the machine and the workpiece are not perfectly rigid, and both move a little bit as the force builds up. Before a chip is peeled away, the end mill and workpiece start to bend away from each other. Then, the next time the blade comes around, there's an even bigger chunk of material to remove, which requires even larger forces. This has a positive feedback loop, meaning the problem only gets worse over time until something breaks or the operator stops it. This can damage any and every part of your setup, including the mill itself. Now, I know I can take this cut on the Pocket NC. This gives a material removal rate of 0.05 cubic inches and a cutting force of 0.67 pounds. So the question is, how does that force change if I increase those parameters? Looking at each of these, any of these changes drastically increases the force required. Now, let's take it over to the mill and see what happens with those forces. All right, so I'm at the mill, and I'm going to be testing what those loads that we calculated will be doing. This block of aluminum is roughly 0.67 pounds. We'll use this as kind of our simulated cut. If I apply this to the end mill, you can see we've got a roughly one thousandth deflection on the end mill shank. Probably be a little bit worse at the tip. What this means is the end mill will be deflecting roughly one thousandth when taking a 0.67 pound cut. If I carefully take two of these plates and place them, we would expect roughly two thousandths of deflection since the spring rate is linear. So you can see there, it's just about two thousandths. And what this means is if we try to take a cut that is roughly 1.3 pounds of force, the deflection is two thousandths, which is coincidentally the chip load, which means we'd be anywhere from barely cutting the material to a four thousandths chip load. Uh, and that wild variation is actually what typically causes chatter. Now, I could be conservative and just take cuts that are light enough for the machine, but that quickly gets boring when looking at 12 plus hour machine times. Now, there isn't really an easy way of making the machine more rigid, but there still are a few parameters I can adjust. For example, instead of taking bigger cuts, what if we take more smaller cuts in the same amount of time? If I can double or triple the speed of the spindle, I can dramatically increase the number of cuts I can take per second without increasing the rigidity requirements. Conceptually, this is pretty straightforward. I want to create a removable powered spindle that can spin faster than the 10,000 RPM limit the current Pocket NC has. For this project, I'd like to use the same ER11 collet system that the normal machine uses. This would allow me to use the tools I have already purchased for the machine. Also, I'd like the system to be the same length as the extended tool holders. This would allow me to use the tool setter. I don't want to permanently modify the machine. This should be a drop-in and removable upgrade. To capture the back of the standard tooling system that Pocket NC has made, I'll 3D scan one of my existing tool holders and bring that into CAD. Now with those parts and this rough sketch, I'll jump into CAD and whip up a prototype design. All right, so after a little bit of CAD modeling, this is what I came up with. This is the spindle speeder. It pops into the normal uh, spindle attachment method using screws just like a normal tool holder. Go into the uh, more complex model. This is the final assembly. So we've got the spindle cartridge down here. There's kind of some connecting bits, a top hat, the motor itself, motor mount, uh, J section pulley, and then the actual spindle uh, itself. The motor generates, you know, torque and spins, which is transmitted through this J belt into this pulley. This pulley is coupled to the spindle and the spindle is supported by a handful of bearings. Uh, that spinning motion and that torque, especially when it's engaged in material, needs to go th 
it, it needs to be transmitted into the body of the pocket NC. Otherwise, this whole thing would try to just spin around. So that's what these connection pieces are. Uh, they hold the spindle cartridge and prevent it from rotating. And that force is resolved into the housing of the pocket NC. The motor mount is adjustable. Uh, screw goes in here and you can kind of push it up to generate tension on the J-belt. If I go into the spindle speeder assembly and do a cross section, uh, you can see I've got the large bearing mocked in there, the small bearing in the back, and you can see there's a little bit of a gap back here. So when you actually insert the M5 screw and tighten it all down, these two bearings squeeze together, which will pull out any of the backlash uh, that you'd normally see in a bearing assembly. One design feature that I like to add with bearings, and it's just general good practice, you'll see these little shelves. So when you insert the bearing, uh, it's nice to have a little area to let the bearing sit before you do the press fit. Otherwise, it's just kind of floating around on top. Uh, and you'll see that on both sides. And that's the design for the spindle speeder. I'm going to make most of the components on my Pocket NC. First up is going to be these pulleys. So I need to make a custom pulley for this J section belt I have. To start, I've created this blank with my Pocket NC, but I actually need to put the grooves necessary for this belt into this piece. That is going to require me to make a custom lathe tool. Now, cutting lathe tools uh, can be a pain in the ass, especially if you're doing it by hand, but we have technology. So I can use my fiber laser to cut the exact profile I want onto the tooling blank. Now, I'll start by grinding a relief into the blank to make room for the profile. Then I'll load the blank into the fiber laser and start blasting the material away. Once I've done, I've got a nice clean profile, which took about five minutes, which is way faster than I could have done by hand. Cutting a pulley with this custom tool really simplifies the process and ensures a good fit with the belt. There's a ton of CNC machining footage in the world. Most of it's on more capable machines than the Pocket NC. I'll spare you my footage. I made all of the aluminum parts on my Pocket NC and had a vendor help me on the precision components for the spindle cartridge. Once all the machine parts are finished, I'll start assembling the components into sub-assemblies. Quick note on how this bearing assembly goes together because I know people will ask. So for any sort of high speed application, you know, first step is to make sure that the bearings you are choosing both can handle the load and actually can handle the spindle speeds that you're proposing. So for my selection, I chose a double row uh, roller bearing, radial roller bearing. I'll put the actual, uh, I'll put the name of this bearing somewhere on screen now. But this essentially has two rows of ball bearings in it and has very good alignment between them. Uh, there's very little backlash. And for this specific bearing, the limiting speed, which is kind of the maximum speed you'd ever want to spin it, is 25,000 RPM, which is you know more than double the spindle speed of the current pocket NC, which is good. And this backup bearing here, which just kind of supports the spindle carriage itself, uh, has a limiting speed of 40,000 RPM, which is you know quadruple the current speed. So both of these bearings are rated for uh, both the loading. This one can handle, I believe it's 2,500 Newtons for static load and 5,600 for dynamic load, which is way more than we'll ever generate with the Pocket NC kind of taking light cuts in aluminum. Uh, and the way this guy works is I've designed this bearing carrier in here and this ER16 adapter. So this basically goes in this guy, this goes on the back. This double row bearing is going to take all of the loads or the majority of the loads during the machining operation. This guy is to just prevent this from kind of whipping around in the back when it's spinning very quickly. So to put this together, to actually transmit power to the spindle, uh, I need this J pulley section, which I believe you've probably watched me make at this point. This guy has little flats in it, which actually transmit the torque. So this slides on and just kind of press fits together. I then slide on this wave spring, which adds some preload to the bearings. They're often called bearing springs. This guy slides on here. It's a pretty tight fit. Then this guy gets put on. 
and I'll go press this together. So this guy is on, and then same thing, this bearing goes just to, this tiny bearing goes on the back just to support that back a little bit more. All right, and once that's all done, there's a screw that goes in the back and that pulls the whole assembly together. Uh, and that makes sure that the bearings are properly preloaded and uh, really it just reduces the overall, uh, it reduces the overall play and, and make sure that there's little to no backlash in the system. Once that's all tightened together, this guy spins nice and freely. And then this is just a standard connection. And that is one spindle cartridge. The electronics for this project are pretty straightforward. I'm going to use a 12 volt power supply, RC BLDC motor driver, and a high speed, high torque RC BLDC motor. Once the spindle cartridge is mounted in the machine, I'll mount the motor and do a handful of shakedown tests. I'll dial in the runout once the bearings heat up. Now I could always improve the runout by grinding in the spindle taper while it's on its own bearings. I'd do this by using the B table and a Dremel. Once I'm reasonably confident it's all going to work, I'll start taking some test cuts. Now, I would call that a success. Pocket NC does sell a variant that goes up to 50,000 RPM, but it's almost double the price. This is a few hundred dollars in small RC components and some custom CNC parts. You can see we were removing about three times the amount of material when adding this. I'll make sure to put a more technical write up on my website, and I'll leave a link in the description below. If you're interested, please reach out about kits. I'm not optimistic on doing kits at the moment. These would be Kind of expensive to put together, but please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. See you on the next project.